Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Today it's time, <laughs> after over a month, after more than 6,000 kilometers, I report all the failures, bugs I had with this car and all the su suggestions, I can't say that word, I know, um, that I would want in the software of this car. So let's just go through it. All the bugs I had, had all to do with the booting process. They all appeared when I was starting the car. So I think there's something wrong with the booting process where it doesn't load everything properly and then there's this mistake. What I had in, in here, um, most, uh, so three messages disappeared. They, they came and when I started the car and disappeared and were gone, one stayed. The one that appeared and, and went away was front assist uh, failure or malfunctioning, something like this. Then, um, what was the other thing? Front assist and uh, lane assist. Both of those came and then it was just went away. So that was fine with me. One was wipers malfunctioning, but they still worked. And again, went away, wasn't, didn't stay there for long. One thing I had, um, I drove 30 kilometers, parked the car for 30 minutes, came back, started the car, and it says powertrain malfunctioning, please visit workshop. Then I had a exclamation park in here and a car with a wrench. Um, but the car drove fine home the 30 kilometers and when I was home I got out of the car, got back in the car and the error message was gone. Again, this was from the start. Um, what I also had um, is again from the start that the cruise control doesn't enable. So I press it and nothing, nothing happens. Uh, the other buttons work, but they say please activate cruise control, but this button doesn't do anything. Again, when I stop the car, get out of the car, get back in, it works. But what I had twice, and this doesn't work with getting out of the car and it doesn't work with rebooting, so pressing this button long, it just has to stay for a while and then has to reboot, then it works, is with the climate. Um, so this is the normal climate I have in my first edition plus, but when this mistakes, mistake comes, it was twice so far, then smart control, a smart climate and air care is gone and uh, the two uh, zones are gone. So I only have one temperature here in the middle and you can see it here too that there's only the temperature here and this is gone. And I, I can adjust all of this and it's heating and cooling, it all works, but that's it. <laughs> so I don't have two zones and I don't have the other options. Uh, one thing that I noticed that I don't know if it's a, a, a bug or just not a feature, I was charging AC with the car um, and it didn't heat in, inside here. I, I, st I tried the start stop button, I did climb it, I put it to, to high or whatever and I, I used the button here that it sometimes has for, for, for stationary air conditioning. It all didn't work. I, it, it just blew air but it wasn't warm. With DC I, I ch checked it already many times, it just works. So that was my bug report. Now let's go to all the suggestions I have for instrument cluster in the infotainment system. So what would I want in the car that it doesn't have right now? First, let's go uh, overview of the car. Um, one thing that doesn't work right now when the when you, I don't lock with the key. So with when I lock with the door handle, just press on it. Um, the charge port is not locked. When I lock with the key, it is unlocked. Number two, every time when you when I get out of the car. Even when I'm charging or when the ignition is on, it doesn't matter. And so, so the, I open the door and get out of the car. Music and climate is off. That's annoying. It should stay on until I lock or there should be a button stay on so that the music is not off. And then when I just, especially when I'm charging, I'm charging, looking at the uh, charging station, I get out of the seat, it stops, I get back in, then it starts again. And this is with climate and music. Please stop that.
Also, what happens when I use my, my phone with Bluetooth with a different device at home, then I come back here and it connects to the car, it will start the exact same song where it was, even though that software is not loaded in the phone, it will just start it. I don't want that. Off. I don't think it's the, it's the, the phone because it doesn't do it with every Bluetooth car. It does it with a few cars and it does it with the ID3. Next thing, let's go to drive. I think the brake feel should, the, the brakes, the, the normal friction brakes should, should be stronger. And I think that's done via software because you use regen and then the friction brakes. They, if you have to brake a bit harder, you really have to press, very, press the brake really wrong, uh, uh, wrong long or uh, hard. I would like that to change, to so have more braking power when the friction brakes come in. I would love, of course, to have more regen and it would be great if there would just be regen levels in the infotainment system. So um, have three levels of regen. I know that the car, when you have it on, it shows you regen levels here and then when you brake it goes through the uh, when you don't brake it goes through the middle when you just get off the uh, accelerator pedal in B and then when you brake it, it applies more regen and I would love it, if it could just uh, do more regen just from the start I know it's a bit more uncomfortable right then but let us decide what we want so it would be nice to have um, regen on normal so like it is now then re regen 1 where it's 75% of the full region it can have and then region 2 where it uh, gives you full region that the car can provide. So one pedal driving would just be awesome. The reverse beep, reverse gear beep, please quieter. It's just so annoying to put it in reverse. Nobody needs that. <laughs> I'm sorry. So even uh, make an option to turn that off or turn it off. It's not needed at all. The, and, but, and the most important part is the lane assist. I understand that lane assist has to be on when you get into the car, but right now I have to press lane assist, go up here, then turn it off. Maybe put a favorite here, but then I have to do press a few things too. What about pressing assist twice means lane assist off if you cannot have a button in there? That would be nice. Cruise control, let's go through cruise control. What I would love would be a normal cruise control without the adaptiveness, so without distance. Just keep the speed, just put it under the modes. That should work, no problem with that. Um, and those plus and minus buttons where it does 10 kilometers more, it goes right now to the next even number. So when you are at 105 and then you press plus uh, harder it goes to 110 and then 120 and so on. Why can't this be just 10 more where you are? So when I'm driving 97 I press that hard and go to 107 and 117 and so on. That would be nicer because people sometimes drive three kilometers over the speed limit and then they always have to press hard when, they, when there's a, sp a speed limit change and then press again a few times. That's annoying. The instrument cluster. <laughs> Number one, of course, a lot of people want that. Please show the state of charge all the time, not just under 10%. We want that. Make an option that it's always there. Then focus. I know that I can focus on the assistant and on the navigation. What if I press few and the assistant is gone as well? So there's only the speed. That would be something nice. What I would also want is that this number, the speed, it moves around when it's one digit, two, two digits or three, what about having this always at the same position? Or if it, 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 it does a movement, it just doesn't switch. So if this is not possible to keep it in the middle, then just do it without an animation. So not going to the right when it's two digits, just right away. It, it, it distracts sometimes. Uh, what we, would be an idea, what if we can change what you can see here? I know this is asking a lot, but what if you can see your consumption view, your music or whatever. If, if you can say um, that the, the assistant is always gone, that you have your uh, trip information here all the time. Or like I said, music or something, that would be nice. What also is missing in the car, and I would love to have that, I can see the drive mode here. but 
if I don't press here, I can have nowhere to know anywhere in the car what drive mode I'm in. It would be nice if it would say here Eco, Comfort or Sport or in the instrument cluster. Let's go to vehicle. Of course, in the charging here, we want the option to have kilowatt. In how much kilowatt, with how much kilowatt are we charging? That would be nice. And well, I think it's a, a bug that the state of charge when you drive doesn't go down uh, uh, in, even in the re real numbers. Sometimes it goes down very linear, but sometimes it's missing out one number. It goes from now 81 to 79 in a, in a jump, not 81, 70. And if, it, if you want to do it in a, in a nerd pro mode, it would be amazing to have here even a, a comma and have, I don't know, 81.5 or something. That would be amazing for nerds. This car needs a nerd mode. I tell, say, talk about this in a second. The trip meter, of course. Most important thing, we need reset trip here, not in vehicle interior cockpit. It has to be in here to reset the thing. And, and this kilometer thing here, uh, distance covered, can also be in here and then have a reset. What I would love in here, since, since start and since charge is resetting itself, we need more long-term trips. So just come in here and put in a few numbers, let's say five different long-terms and maybe re uh, be possible to rename them. Uh, I don't know, holiday and I don't know what you want to call them, but more long distance, more long-term trips. So at least five, maybe, maybe more, maybe unlimited. It's just, it just helps. What I also would love is if this would also show 100 meters, not kilometers full. The instant consumption should show kilowatt hours per hour. The eGolf can do that, ID3 should be able to do that as well. With the drive, of course, I want that it remembers the last gear I was in. Did I use B or D the last time I was driving? Just remember that and then every time I turn the car on, I personally drive in B, I want it in B so I don't have to do it twice, please. Stationary air conditioning. It's nice that there's a temperature, but what if seat heating and temperature is different in the different departure times? In the morning I want 24 degrees, maybe in the afternoon I go home from work I want 20 degrees because it's sunny. That would be nice if I can change in here temperature so with every departure time that I have, the temperature and what seat heating and steering wheel heating and rear window defrosting, if I can select this at each uh, de departure time and of course more. We need more than two. It should be unlimited, 10, 20, whatever. What I would love with the ID light is if it would show the charging the whole time, even if I well, if I'm still sitting in the car, it should show that, even if I turn off the car, that would be nice. It just does it for 10 seconds or 15 seconds and then stops. This should be on the whole time. And then, of course, there should be an option for the navigation when it does the blue line, that it does it more often. You, you, uh, it may be a setting that uh, if I say until I turn, so it should show blue, blue, blue to the right until I do my turn, so not just twice as it does right now. With the climate, it would be amazing if it would just remember my last state. So I go to work in the morning, it is at this setting, I go back in a few hours later, it should have the exact same setting that it was when I left it. That would be amazing. Or just take the, the temperature or whatever that it has from the stationary air conditioning, so the, the, the pre-conditioning, that would be good too. It would be amazing if I could see if the heat is on, so if I set the temperature and I go to the spot where the car needs to heat, it would be nice if this would turn red, for example. The eGolf can do that. And also something that maybe is nice, it's good that when I press here, I get to the climate. What if I can turn on the seat heater here already? So if I press the seat heater symbol, it would be nice if I can adjust the seat heater here. And it's nice that I can see that the air conditioning is off. What if the, it says heat on and off here too? So I can see in this overview already if the heat is on, what temperature in my seat heat, heaters. That would be amazing. The navigation. Of course what we need is a trip planner that uh, calculates 
with how much state of charge I will arrive and where should I charge. I want a preferred charger if I want to charge only at Ionity or only at 50 kilowatt chargers. I want a selection to see what chargers I can see, so AC or DC and what plug and what power so I can select all of this and when I do a long trip it should, should tell me please charge here for 10 minutes and charge there for 20 minutes and so on. That's what we need. So a filter for the chargers and of course a filter of overall um, stuff that I can see. So if I don't want to see a gas station I want to filter that out. An idea for the infotainment system at all. You have those three windows. What about uh, a nerd view? So an option that you can turn on and then with the nerd view you see how much power is the, is the motor taking, how much power is the heat or the, or the air conditioning using right now, how much power is being used for, for the battery to heat or to cool, like uh, Hyundai has it and Kia in their cars, it's just really amazing. Instant consumption for all the different components. What would be, would be amazing would be temperature of the battery, that's really nerd mode, I would love that. And how about a next screen? So we have those three screens. How about another one, not with like here four favorites, which which with all favorites. So another thing like this, but all favorites. So every options in option in the car can be a favorite. Not every, but a lot of options. And then you have I don't know, lane assist off, uh, auto hold, um, um, heat on. I don't know millions of options go to trip right away not vehicle go state of charge or that that you go to different menus very fast and choose different options and it, and it should be unlimited there should be a hundred if i want to have hundred favorites in there because a lot of people want favorites and not just four and why do i have to switch why can it be on that thing all the time like it is now and i just switch it and it's done that would be amazing the last thing is of course the WeConnect ID app. It's nice that I can see the, the range and the state of charge. I can preheat the car, precondition and it works. What I would want is that it would update more often. So it, right now it sometimes doesn't update at all when I'm charging and sometimes it says 80% and then it says 85. So it doesn't go 81, 82 in every kilometer of range or something. The climate to, to, to uh, uh, start that, that it uh, preconditioned car. By the way, seat heaters don't work, doesn't do that. Um, but it takes 70 seconds till it all starts. That would be nice. What we need in here is of course the trip meter, the last few trips uh, with all the data, consumption and so on and how long it took. Then uh, I want to see where the car is. So, so locate the car and I would love to uh, put a navigation in here and send it to the car. But that's it, that's all for me. I, I try to put a pole underneath, I have to figure out how to do that. So you first movers uh, can select what option you would like uh, or what feature that I mentioned and maybe then we get it, that would be amazing. But that's it for me, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and take care, bye!